Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Country Living. Today, I want to talk all thing bee stuff, aka apiary or apiarist stuff. So, if this is something you're keen on, stick around and we're going to go right through it today. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. <clears throat> For those of you who aren't aware, I actually used to have a, a beekeeping business, had about 80 hives, um, sold pretty well all of them, and kept myself uh, one. Two, actually, I kept myself two. Um, of that, I've gone and divided them a couple of times, and right now, as it stands, I've got four functional beehives. Now, in today's video, what I want to do is I want to go through, number one, uh, why we have bees, Number two, how we harvest our bees. Number three, um, how to maintain your bees. And number four, how to split bees slash make new hives. So, um, yeah, if this is something you're interested in, you're in for a treat. First things first, and I want to address this while I'm here, why we have bees. Now, I don't eat honey. Well, I do eat honey. I, I want to say I don't, eat, I, don't, I don't eat a lot of honey. And the reason is because I just don't find anywhere to put it. Um, like, what, what do you do with honey? I just... I don't have it on my wheat bix. I don't eat wheat bix. Um, I don't put it on muesli. I do put it occasionally with peanut butter. Peanut butter and honey on bread's pretty good. But apart from that, I don't really eat much. You know, for me personally, it'd be cheaper to just to buy the stuff. Um, but I really like to spend time with bees. You know, as one one of the guys that put a set of hives off one day said to me, he goes, when I get my bee suit on and get into my hive, my wife's voice seems to just fade into the background. Um, he was a bit of a philosopher. It's not the case with myself, but it is therapeutic nonetheless looking after a nice beehive. It is a bittersweet relationship we have. Obviously, they sting um, if you aren't properly protected. Um, and it's sweet, obviously, because of the honey. Now, uh, before we get into the, into the beekeeping side of things, um, uh, talking on the honey side of things, that's the main reason I keep the bees as well, is for honey. And as a part of our farm, as an attractive proposition, we like to keep the bees to sell the honey, obviously. They're not a high maintenance um, thing, you know, I probably open them up once a year to check them, make sure they're all alive or whatever. But apart from that, you also do is harvest honey. Now, part of the reason of that is we have flow hives, or flow hive style hives. So, behind me here, you can see all the bees come in this side, so um, you can see they come in here, here, and here. This hive here is one I tried to split last year, and it actually died out. Now that's that comb on top there. It come from the bees, so I'll just open this one up. Now I am not American, and I have no idea how the Americans do it, but they go into these beehives borderline naked. And if one of them come over here and to, to these hive, these bees, they would probably die. These are um, Italian bees, um, and they are cranky at the best of days. So I'll be fully suited up before I open up any single beehive with any sort of bee life in it. But we're not gonna be doing that, and, and this is part of why I have flow hives for the extraction part. We can have people come here fully unsuited and just get honey on tap. So I'll show you the, the flow hive here. This is the setup they've got. So on the back of these boxes, we open it like that. We twist that little thing. This comes off the top, and this comes off the bottom. Now, for you, those of you that don't know, flow hive is actually an Australian invention. <coughs> Look at them, fellas. They stole a bit of paint off the inside of the box, and he's rubbing it. <laughs> you don't see that every day. So the flow hive is an Australian invention, and the way it works, um, you put your key in the top here, and I'll show you in a second. So what we'll do is we'll stick our key in here. You can see there's a bigger opening and a smaller opening. You stick it in the smaller opening, you stick your key right through to the back. Then what we do is we twist that and crack it. And so the flow hive is made, let me just put it down. In such a fashion, with the bee cell like this, and when you crack that, the cell goes halfway like that, and what happens is the honey runs down like that, right through to the bottom of the hole. And that's where it comes out, in the bottom of the hole there, and we get our honey. So, 
What I've got here for the moment, I'll show you. I've got my little chair here to lift it up high, nice and high. <coughs> um, I'll just sit my little um, blanket out of the way. I've got my bucket. Um, I just gave it a wash before. It's nice and clean. And I'll sit my bucket there as close as I can. Oh, got a bit of stuff under here. I'll sit my bucket as close as I can to the beehive. So then we stick these tubes in the bottom here. We pull our little, I'm gonna do these three here together. Now something really interesting is we actually harvested this cell here last Sunday. And you can see that honey is a darker color than this cell here. This is probably the winter stuff. Now being in spring is when we start harvesting. So I'll put him in there. And then we can open up two of these things at once. Okay, so we're set up here now. Um, and I'm gonna crack these two open and then I'll probably get another couple and we can drain like four cells at once. And you can watch the honey just pumping this bucket. Um, and if you can imagine, oh, I'll get a crack and then I can start talking. So, <laughs> I'll pull these out. <clears throat> Top here. You can see the bees can't get out here because the plastic keeps them from getting out. So I'll stick it in like that. It's really tight, really hard to crack in. You take it slowly. I might just bring in here quickly. And you can see the honey dripping <coughs> out the middle there. Just coming down and it drips down right to there. So I'll just sit you back over here. <coughs> As it starts running, make sure that's closed. Oh, a little bit of something just dropped in that bucket. Got that. Um, and then <clears throat> honey will just run out the top. So I'll do the same with the next one. Yeah. yeah, and you can see how easy that is just to do like that. So you can imagine if this was an open day, you know, we had people coming here, kids want to see how this sort of stuff done. Instead of just selling them bottles of honey, we can actually bring people out here and give them the experience of actually getting their own honey from the hive. You don't get fresher honey than that. You can see why it's a very attractive proposition for us. So you can see that this here is um, really efficient. You can see we've got four streams of honey running. We've probably already got a kilo in that bucket. <clears throat> we can get up to as much as um, 20 kilos for one of these full um, flow hives emptied. This is a 10 kilo bucket. <coughs> I don't think we'll get much more than this, um, than 10 kilos today. If we do get 10 kilos, we may even get less than that. Um, but you know, just speaking quickly while that's dripping, um, a couple of things, you know, for price wise, for setting up with one of these, let's back you out there a bit, setting up one of these um, flow hives. You know, they are fairly expensive. Um, you know, they're over $1,000. But if we get 10 kilos out of here, and in a honey flow with a matured hive, <laughs> we can harvest this every two to three weeks. Um, and when, especially here, we got a lot of eucalyptus around. And when the eucalyptus flower, they produce a lot of nectar, like a lot of nectar. Not much pollen, but a lot of nectar. And that's essentially what you're harvesting here. And if it costs you over $1,000, and you get five harvests a year of 10 kilos, that's 50 kilos for that year's work. And we sell for $14 a kilo. Um, so you're looking at, um, uh, was it was $140 per, per bucket um, by five is 2,000, uh, no, of honey for that year. So, you know, you'd pay the flow hive off in, in two years of honey harvest for that one hive. Um, at this stage, you can see there's a couple of curious bees start hanging around, like what's this honey doing out the back here? They're not quite working out what's going on. Everybody inside's freaking out. They're like, where's my honey gone? It's disappearing. It was in there, now it's not. Um, <coughs> and you'll see they start eating the wax off because they're all being capped, all these things. Uh, this is probably something I should mention quickly. It's important that the, 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 the honey's capped. That means that they've um, dehumidified it. <coughs> I think it's down to the 6% or 10% moisture content, fairly low. Above that, you extract it, it can it can ferment and turn into meat. 
Um, so it's important that you get that um, that honey cap before you extract it. Uh, other thing to remember as well with this stuff is it's important you let it run out. Um, the bees will clean up. They'll once they once this is done, we close them up again. The bees will get in there. They get a little tongues in. They suck, suck all the honey out. <clears throat> once they suck the honey out, they will. Um, They'll clean it up, they'll seal up the insides and they'll start putting it back in. If you don't let it come out properly, they may not get back in there and seal it up properly and then you have honey leakage problems. Uh, wind's also a problem, you can see the wind's blowing it sideways there. Um, but so I'll just let it sit here and run for like an hour and once it's come back and it's empty, I'll just close them all up. Okay, they've slowed right down now. Um, I'm gonna close them up and let the last bit drip out. So, exact same as before, but we stick it in the small ones down the top. So we go in the top one, twist them around, and then close them up. So what's that, what that's done is got them combs that were like that and it put them back like this and now the bees can get in there and clean it out. Um, I'll show you in a second but the bees are already going in there and they're sucking that honey out and cleaning the cells up. Uh, a couple of bees are falling in here by the looks of it. I'll just... <laughs> okay ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> there you can see honey's pretty well gone to a stop. So he's dried up. So we just pull these little tubes out. And then what happens, <clears throat> I'll take you in close here. The little hole <coughs> in the bottom of that circle and the honey actually drips through there. And you can see the little bees with the little tongue sticking up through the bottom there. And they'll suck that, that honey will drip through there and, and suck out. And you can also see in there the bees are already into it. They've already taken the caps off. They've got in there and they're opening up and they're cleaning themselves out. They've started with that one, but no doubt they'll get into these other ones as well um, as they get see fit and get time to do. So we'll chuck our caps back on and, um, and the harvest is done. And most importantly, the lid on the honey. I'll show you how much we got here. So, that there's out of four frames. You can see it's a fairly dark honey. Um, it's a fairly heavy honey. Um, yeah, so a fair, fair bit in there. If I had to have a guess, probably about five kilos of honey in there. And that's out of the four frames. Um, so not bad, yeah, not bad for them four frames. Like I said, we'd probably get a fair bit more coming into summer, but we'll chuck our lid on there. Okay, guys, so that's this week's uh, episode. We wanted to go a bit more into other stuff as I mentioned before but it's just got so long that I've had to split the video in half and that means that next week we'll have a part two to the series which we'll be focusing on splitting the hive and um, checking out for disease. So I hope you guys like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the uh, channel and I'll see you again next week.